Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna talk about the world of rules. And the best thing about the world about rules in QuickBooks Online is the fact it can save you so much time. I'm not talking about a couple of minutes here and there. I'm talking about hours upon hours of time. So if you're interested in saving time, and let's be honest, who isn't, then stay tuned for this video where we're gonna look at how to save you a ton of time. My name is Aaron Patrick, I'm a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer with a fancy new logo, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, and also head of account here at Boffix. Now this video is a bit of a trade secret and basically gonna let you know how you can save a ton of time in QuickBooks Online using the wonderful world of rules. Now, as you can imagine, I've seen quite a few different QuickBooks accounts out there in the wilderness. Well, one thing I can definitely tell you is the people who are utilizing rules for the best possible way are the ones who are getting the most out of QuickBooks and also saving the most amount of time. You see, at my practice, I'm able to make sure that literally 85% of the transactions that go through my bank account are covered by rules, which if you think about it, it's a great position to be in. That means from an automation point of view, all that data has always been kept up to date. And that also means that if there is a transaction left in the bank account, then what I like to think of it is that I've got rid of all that noise and all that noise has all been dealt with. And I'm only dealt with those transactions I need to be spending my time on. So if you turn up to your bank and there's a hundred transactions in there, how do you know which ones are going to be your quote unquote daily transactions and which ones are those one-off ad hoc transactions that you really need to concentrate on. By using rules, you eliminate all that guesswork. And when I log into my practice and only see one or two transactions there to deal with at any point in time, I know I've got to really concentrate on those transactions, make sure that I'm posting to the right place, make sure I'm considering the VAT or whatever I need to do. But it means I'm focused on those complex transactions. And all of that other quote unquote noise has all been dealt with. And even if for the, some reason I haven't quite got the, the rule right and it was posted maybe to the wrong category or something like that, at least consistently it's been posted to the same place, which when consistency is the big key when it comes to looking at doing your bookkeeping, that's the best position to be in. If consistently you were posting something to post in stationery, then realize it should have been purchases instead, then it's really, really easy to be able to move that and change them over. If you've been posting a bit here, bit there, bit everywhere else, it's gonna be a lot more tricky for you to be able to actually achieve what you're looking to achieve. So join me on this video. Let's go and have a look at how rules work in QuickBooks Online and how you can save a ton of time. Let's go. Okay, everyone, welcome to the bank section. Now here, this is where we understand the world of rules because if you notice when you go to your banking area and you look here, you've got the rules section just there. And within this rules section is the place where we can understand and figure out rules itself. We may have already come across rules and not really realized it. Who among you have done this when you've gone to put a transaction in? So let me go find one now. Let's find... There we go. We've got Pret and Manja here. So what about if I did my first Pret and let's just say there was 20% VAT on it. And let's add that one. And then I notice that there's another one straight after it. QuickBooks has realized its subsistence, realized it's 20%. I press add and I get the following pop-up. Now this pop-up is really important. Next time you see it, really do take some indication and understand exactly what it's telling you. Let's have a look. You see, this pop-up is telling us that basically we keep doing the same thing. And every time you keep doing the same thing in QuickBooks, it's QuickBooks starts to learn and understand what's going on. Well, in this case, what it's done is it's found that Pret sat here. It's seen that you always put it to subsistence and it's seen that you've put the VAT consistently the same. Now for completeness, I probably want to have Pret as one of my uh, payees here and I will probably want that supply set there. But the key thing is, it's asking you that is it always going to be subsistence? And if so, why not create a rule and apply the similar transactions in the future? Basically, if it sees PRET again, it's going to apply subsistence, it's going to apply VAT, and if we have this auto add feature on here, it means it's going to automatically add itself to QuickBooks Online instead of waiting for you to go in 
to the full review section and put the information in yourself and press that add button. Now, in this case, you have the option to create rule, which is create the rule straight away. But let's have a look and see what edit rule actually does. Well, edit rule actually brings up your rule area. Now, normally it will give it a name, but for today, we're just going to pull prep. And if, first of all, it's saying that every time that money out happens in our business bank account, and I can choose what bank account, I can choose if it's money in or money out, then it's going to include this rule. This rule will activate if the following conditions are met. Basically, a condition is a trigger point. So in this case, if it sees the description containing the word prep, then it's going to activate this rule. And you can be really savvy with these conditions. So I could drop this down and go for any and all. All means that you want every part of those conditions to be met. So imagine that you were doing something that related to not only a description, but the amount. Imagine you wanted to say that every time I went to Curry's PC World and every time that it was below £100, I wanted it to go to, say, post and stationery or computer expenses, something like that. But if it was over £100, then I want to capitalise that item and I want it to go somewhere else. Well, that's where that all element would come into play. You would want to make sure that it was all and it was a description that contains curries and a description or an amount that is probably greater than £100. Because then all of those conditions are met, that's the only time that this rule will go into place. And you could do one for greater, one for less than, and that way you're going to be able to make sure that you have a really savvy rule setup that's going to help you going forward. Then we have any. Well, any is designed to make sure that if any of these conditions are met, then it will work. So, for example, imagine you had fuel situation and you had Shell Garage, BP Garage, Morrison's Petrol, whatever they're going to be. You could eat, keep adding the same description or the description that relates to it and keep going to any. That means that if any of those conditions are met, that particular rule will hit. So maybe you want to make sure that every time fuel is put in there, that it doesn't go to motor expenses or you know whatever your client's been put in there. Maybe you want to make sure it's always going to direct a loan account or something like that. Then you get to set that. And as again, if you're doing an auto ad, they won't even see that appearing in their bank account. It'll automatically get shown straight into it. That's when you can start seeing how the power of rules can really help you and make sure that you're getting the most out of QuickBooks Online. In my case though, it doesn't matter if it's all or any, I've only got one condi condition here and I'm choosing description and I'm going to prep. Now notice there's description and there's bank text. Description is that short snappy element within the banking section. So for example, here you can see in the background there, I've got Streamline, Staple, Shopify, short, snappy, really, really quick and easy. Whereas bank text is that full long element that you'll see on a bank statement. And for most of the time, description will be all you need. But in some circumstances, you're gonna need the long, text to be able to figure out what this rule needs to be. A great example of this is HMRC. The description will always be HMRC, 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 but that bank text might give you the indication of if it's VAT, if it's self-assessment, if it's PAYE, etc., etc. So sometimes using that bank text is really important. Once you've figured out your conditions though, it's then all about assigning. So in this case, we wanted to make sure it was an expense and we could choose it as a transfer as check if we need to. And we can put it directly to subsistence because that's what we've told QuickBooks. You even have the option to add a split. And when you add a split, you can do percentage or amount. Now again, splits when you can be really, really savvy in the way that this works and the way you can save so much time. If you think about it, being able to split 50-50, for example, could be a great way of putting in things like private proportion and things like that. So even if I'm not doing bookkeeping for a client, if I can go in and intercept the transactions and automatically set them to do something, not only am I saving myself time when it comes to doing the account, but I'm saving my client a lot of time as well because they don't have to individually think about each transaction. And again, the danger is when you leave it to a clients do it, they may be inconsistent with their approach. With rules, it's always going to be the same amount. You're always going to apply whatever that rule is going to be. So consistently, it's going to be in the same place. Amount, on the other hand, is really clever for when you have different types of VAT sections. So for example, it could be a card machine where each month you're consistently paying the same amount for, say, the rental of it. 
and it could be that that's got the VAT element on it and you want that to go to equipment rental. Whereas the remainder, which is always a variable amount, could be the charges associated with that credit card machine, which could be exempt in this case. Therefore, you've got two different VAT elements and also two different categories splitting it and saying that it consistently going to say say 50 pound is always going to be the rental where the remainder is going to be going to charges can save you a lot of time and again ensures that you're getting that VAT right and if you press that auto add button that means the client doesn't even have to worry about that anymore we use rules all the time to reinforce to our clients that certain things have to be done in a certain way and taking away that guesswork, taking away that need to review, taking that worry that the client might accidentally put it to the wrong place, we use rules to consistently make sure that we get the same results. And that gives us the confidence and saves us so much time in reviewing, in having to make amendments for them, in having to explain it, whatever it needs to be, we are saving so much time just be being a little bit savvy with the way we apply rules. In my particular case though, I don't need to do a split. I'm happy with subsistence, I'm happy with the tags. The tax. I can put a tag on there, a class, a location, a memo, and then I can auto add just here and press save. And what that means then is every time that Pret hits this account, it's going to automatically go into there for us. So we can see that in the rules section now, we've got our one and only rule that we've created, which is our Pret rule. We can go in, we can edit the rule, brings up the same screen. We can go down, we can disable, copy, delete the rule. So we've got those options for us, search for the rule and, and so on and so forth. Now, one thing to note about this list is this is priority. So this rule number one will be the first one it goes to. So again, being a little bit savvy with it, you could use that to your advantage. For example, I could put that if it has the word PREP and it was greater than £100, for example, I might want it to go to a different category. But if it just says the word PREP and I have it as a lower priority, then it will catch all the rest of the PREPs that appear. And being savvy like that can be really, really beneficial. Another thing to note is the fact that you can export your rules and then import them. So in my case, if I went to import and browse, so if I bring in a set of rules that I've exported from a different client, for example, like all these rules here, press next and press import, then I can quickly bring in imports from a different client, saving me even more time. And what we've tend to do is we created ourselves a QuickBooks file that has in there the most generic rules we can think of. And every time we take on a new client, we bring these rules in so that again, consistently, we're always dealing with them. Now we can amend them, change them, whatever we need to do, but doing it this way makes it so much easier for us to be in control of rules. See this way now, I've got all of these rules in place and suddenly my bank account is down to only 24 transactions because a lot of those transactions have been dealt with, if I go to categorized, by my auto rules. I'm automatically saying what Shopify is. I'm automatically saying what this Peter John is, what this Jane, what this bank charges, what this fancy hotels, and all these other transactions have automatically been added for me. Meaning I'm now only got to concentrate on maybe the more complicated transactions. If I go through and clear all the ones that have actually already been matched and accept them, I now know that on my screen, I'm left with only 13 transactions. And I can imagine some of these can be dealt with by rules. For example, this streamline one is an example of that idea where I could go in and create a rule, but every transaction has the option for create a rule down here as well. So I press create a rule, it's automatically said streamline and I can give it a name of streamline. And I could go in and I could add a split and I could say that the first 25 pounds of this is always going to be rental at 20%. But then the remainder, which is going to be fees, charges, and this one's going to be exempt. So as quick as this, I'm about to post three of those streamlines and they've automatically been posted to me. And again, if I went through and I put all these, if I put all these at McDonald's and I accepted them once I've updated them for the VAT, then even though I'm applying them in bulk, I still get told this element here. Am I okay to create a rule? And I'm just gonna say create rule 
let that go ahead. Now one of the times you can really save time is when people are sending you money and using the automation settings in QuickBooks. So for example, if I went to accounts and settings and I went to advance and I went to automation, I can automatically apply bills and credits just here with these two tick boxes. What that means is if I go to this one and I create a rule and I say that every time that Margaret pays me some money, I want to put the money directly to my debtors. I want to have no VAT and press save. That means that every time that Margaret sends me some money, I can go into my sales customers. I can find Margaret. And we can see that it's automatically applied that banking to there, putting it against the client, try to pay it off as much as it possibly can and trying to pay off what was there. And in this case, it's left me with really complicated transactions I can deal with accordingly. So there we have it, a look at the rules section in QuickBooks Online. I promise you, once you get your head around it and start putting some rules in place and letting QuickBooks actually give you some examples of rules to put in there by letting it go and give you those pop-up messages, you're gonna be in a much better position. Let me know in the comments below, is there any times that rules have ever confused you or any times you found rules to be really useful? The more you let me know below, the more likely we're going to do a follow-on video where we're going to look at some really in-depth rules that go for you. And if you like the idea of an in-depth rule video, put the thumbs up on this video, comment down below, and we'll make sure that that becomes higher up the priority of videos we're going to do in the future. This has been our first look at rules, but we've got lots and lots more to talk about in the rules section. So stay tuned to the channel, make sure you've logged in and you've made sure that you've subscribed, ding that little bell if you need to, all that sort of stuff to be the first to know how to get the most out of rules in QuickBooks Online. Because I promise you, once you get this right, you are not saving a couple of hours here and there or a couple of minutes here and there. You are saving hours upon hours of work. I cannot tell you how much time it saves me in my practice, not only for my practice itself, but all of my clients. It's scary the amount of rules that must be out there and must be utilized each and every single day. And if you add all of those up, that's a considerable amount of time saved. And that means that I'm confident that things are being put at least consistently to the same place. and means my client is getting real time information. So it really is a win-win scenario. My name's been Aaron Patrick. I do hope that this has been really useful for you. I want to be making sure that each and every single one of you have some opportunity to see what rules are in place. Keep an eye on this video, keep an eye on this channel. We'll be doing some more rules to make sure that you save a ton of time. My name's been Aaron Patrick. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure to do this video for you. Make sure you like, subscribe and all that jazz and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. I told him I can be a fighter if you want. I'll be there to catch you if you fall. I can make it brighter when it starts. When it starts. I told him I would do it all for you. And I know you do it for me too. I can be a fighter if you want. If you want. Now I can be a fighter. I can be a fighter. Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we're staying bad My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him na, 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 na My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks Chat, Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description, but it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.